Okay, so we're going to take a look at substitutions, and this time we're going to get exponentials and logarithms involved. So just like we've done the derivatives of exponentials and logarithms with chain rules, we'll do integrals involving exponentials and logarithms with substitutions, since substitutions is to integration as chain rules is to differentiation. And so we've seen and talked about some of these formulas, but I figured it was worth summarizing it. The derivative of d of p of x, e to the x is e to the x, so the integral of e to the x is e to the x. And notice I've left off the plus c, it really should be there, but I was just kind of trying to emphasize the concept. And so the derivative, and notice I wrote it kind of funny here, is uh, the... Okay, so I made a rather sizable mistake here. This should say the derivative of b raised to the x power is ln of b, b raised to the x. And so the integral of b to the x is 1 over ln of b times b to the x. Sorry about that. And then natural logarithm, derivative of natural log is 1 over x. And the integral of 1 over, so the integral of 1 over x is ln of x. And we use absolute values to ensure that we haven't violated the domain of natural logarithm, given that it needs to be positive. And so I have my notes here, like, don't forget, plus c where applicable. There definitely should be a plus C on all of these, but I was trying to emphasize the point. So we're just going to do a bunch of examples here. So let's try it. Uh, U substitution here. Well, a function and its derivative, well, all I see hidden inside of anything is negative x. And if you can tell that that would be a constant, then, then there's always kind of a constant you can imagine there. Won't hurt anything. But really, just if you don't see it, just say, all right, well, what's trapped inside? Well, what's trapped inside is negative x is trapped inside of e to the power. So the derivative uh, is going to be negative 1, which gives us that dx is equal to negative 1 times du. Make this substitution, and you get uh, integral of e to the u times negative 1 du. Negative 1 can just go outside of the integral, e to the u du. Integral of e to the u, well, what is the derivative of e to the u? It has itself as its derivative, so e to the u plus c, and reverse substitute to get your final answer. Negative e raised to the negative x power plus c. All right, let's do another one. Uh, for this one, I'm going to say 1 plus e to the x is the function, and then e to the x outside is its derivative. I can see that, so I'll use the substitution u equals 1 plus e to the x. So du dx equals e to the x means that we're going to have dx is equal to du over e to the x. Make the substitution integral e to the x, square root of u, and then relate the differentials du over e to the x. e to the x reduces away, and I think we've done the integral of u to the one-half enough times that we can just jump to u to the one-half power. That's going to be two-thirds times u raised to the three-halves power plus c. And finally, reversing our substitution to get two-thirds times one plus e to the x all raised to the three-halves power plus c for our final answer. I'm having fun, so let's just keep going. Uh, 3x squared uh, times e raised to the 2 times x to the third power. Well, x to the third power has derivative x squared, sort of, with a constant out in front of it. So our function is going to be 2x to the third power, and the derivative is going to be that 3x squared expression. So that's going to lead us to the u substitution of the function being 2x to the third power. Relate the differentials, du dx is equal to 2 times 3 is 6x squared. This gives us that dx is going to be du over 6x squared. Use the substitution to get our integral. We'll leave our first little bit that doesn't involve the substitution alone, 3x squared. Sorry about that. e raised to the u power, and then our differentials, dx becomes du over 6x squared. x squareds reduce away. And I can pull my 3 6 out front of the integral, e to the e to the u du power. And so 3 6 becomes 1 half. e to the u has derivative e to the u plus c. And finally, reverse your substitution. 1 half e raised to the... Wait a minute, where am I? e raised to the... Where's our u substitution? 2x to the third power, 2x to the third power, plus 
C is our final answer. Let's try another one. Okay. Uh, this time it's a definite integral, so we should take note of that. And e to the 1 minus x. Well, the first one was, first example I did was, didn't really have a function and its derivative, so we just picked the exponent to be our u substitution. So let's try that. u is equal to 1 minus x. This gives us du dx is equal to negative 1. And so dx is going to be negative du. Using this substitution, what do we get? I'm not going to change my limits of integration, so I'm just going to put them on hold, so to speak e to the u power, and then times negative 1 du. Okay, that seems pretty reasonable here. So the negative goes out front, we get negative 1, and what has the derivative e to the u? Well, e to the u has the derivative e to the u, and we're going to evaluate this thing with respect to the correct limits of integration. So what are those going to be? Well, we're going to back substitute, so we're in terms of x, so we can use our original limits of integration. So e raised to the 1 minus x power all evaluated from x equals 1 to x equals 2. Do this math, get negative e raised for x equals 2, 1 minus uh, 2 minus for x equals 1, negative e raised to the 1 minus 1 power. Uh, that's e to the 0, so this is going to be negative e to the negative 1 plus e to the 0. That gives us negative 1 over e plus 1 for our final answer here. Let's just keep going. All right, another definite integral. Uh, one e to the one over x power over x squared. Now this one might be a little bit harder to see. Uh, so maybe just kind of rewriting things. Let's see, let's see if we can rewrite things. Well, I'm not gonna make any substitutions. We're just rewriting our integral. I don't like that x squared down there. So I'm gonna write that as x to the negative two power. And since I wrote x to the negative power, and I have 1 over x, maybe writing this as x to the negative 1 will help me in the exponent of the exponential e to the... So it's a little bit harder to see, but this looks like x to the negative 1 is hidden inside of another function, e to the power. So maybe that, that would be our first guess for our u substitution. But then thinking back to our derivatives, x to the negative 1 power has some flavor of, multiplied by a constant, x to the negative 2 as its derivative. So yeah, that's going to be our substitution here. So let's make our substitution. u is equal to x to the negative 1 power du dx is equal to uh, negative 1 x to the negative second power. Um, and so we'll multiply dx. So, and you know what, we're going to, yeah, we'll put the dx over there. And we're just going to do a little bit of algebra here and say, all right, what do we have here? Let's keep going. Uh, dx is equal to du over negative x to the negative 2 power. You can put everything back in terms of negative or positive exponents if you want, but since you made the decision, we made the decision to put negative exponents up here, let's just keep the negative exponents in our substitution as well. So under this substitution, our integral becomes, and now we're changing our variable of integration, so we'll keep track of that in our limits of integration. Leave this guy alone, we haven't touched him e x to the negative 2, e to the u power, and then to relate our differentials, dx becomes du over negative x to the negative 2. And there we see that that, uh, that expression reduces away to clean up relatively nicely. We've got a negative, so don't forget about that little guy. And so pulling that negative 1 through our integral, we will have e to the u du as our final result. And that's relatively easy to integrate. What has the derivative e to the u? Well, just e to the u does, and that negative out front makes it negative. Uh, I've done a relatively lazy job here, and I've forgotten to do my limits of integration there, so we'll put those back in. Now we'll back substitute and put the correct limits of integration in for the way we're approaching this problem. So to back substitute, uh, negative e to the u, u is going to be, this time I'm going to write it as 1 over x instead of x to the negative 1 power, because I know that's going to be easier for me anyway to evaluate when I start plugging numbers in. So now we're ready to evaluate this thing. For x equals 2, we have negative e to the 1 half power minus, for x equals 1, negative e to the 1 over 1 power. This is going to give us negative e to the 1 half, which if you wanted to, you could write that as negative square root of e, uh, plus e to the first is just plus e, or plus e 
which turned into a C, which was intentionally meant to be an E. All right, I'm just gonna keep keep rolling with these. Okay, what about this one? Three over x minus ten. Well, I may not see where to go, but I see that x minus ten is kind of trapped in the basement. The derivative of x is just a constant, so maybe this will work out. x minus ten as our u. That means that du dx is equal to one. So we have that du just directly substitutes in for dx. Under this substitution, our integral becomes three over u times du. Uh, how do we integrate this thing? Resist the urge to turn that to three times u to the negative one power. You will run into a problem if you do the power rule there of division by zero. But if you do the, you end up doing that, it's okay. Just say, all right, well, maybe that was the wrong step. Go back to one step prior to and try again. What has the derivative of three over u? Well, I don't know. Let's get that pesky constant out of there. And then it becomes, what has the derivative of one over u? Well, ln of u does. So this becomes three times ln of, remember your absolute value bars there ln of u plus c. Now our original problem was not in terms of u, so let's back substitute to get 3 ln absolute value of x minus 10 and absolute value plus c for our final answer. If you want to be really, really diligent, x minus 10 has to be greater than 0. And so well, the absolute value bars make it greater than 0, so it has, cannot be 0, so x is not allowed to be 10. Okay. Another example. So I see that this thing trapped in the bottom is a function which has somewhat ish looking to be the derivative above. Uh, x to the 4 would have 4x to the 3rd, whereas we've got 2x to the 3rd above. So let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens here. This looks like the derivative ish. So, as usual, we'll just try something and see how it works out. u equals x to the fourth power plus 3x squared. du dx is equal to 4x to the third power plus 6x squared. And so, solving for dx, you get dx is equal to du over 4x to the third plus 6x squared. Under this substitution, our integral becomes, leave the top guy alone, 2x to the third power plus 3x all over u. And then, oh no, I'm sorry about that. What happened? We went forward. All over u equals what? Uh, now we relate our differentials. dx is du over 4x to the third power plus 6x squared. Oh no, things were supposed to get nicer, weren't they? They were definitely supposed to get nicer. So why didn't they? Because I made a mistake. This, uh, the derivative of 3x squared over here is not 6x squared, it's 6x. There's no exponent on this guy. So we'll get rid of that pesky guy, and now things will work out. But we still may not see it. We're like, well, why doesn't, they don't look the same. This derivative, this pesky thing up here was supposed to reduce away. So how do we make that happen? Well, I have to algebra this expression on the bottom. Uh, four and six may not factor out directly, but they have a common factor of two. So popping a two out, we have two x to the third power plus three x. And that's exactly the same expression as we have above, and we do see that it reduces away. And we're left with just our uh, factor of 2 in the denominator. So we'll pull that 1 over 2 out front, and then we're left with just 1 over u du. And similar to the last one, that is 1 half ln of absolute value of u plus c. Reverse our substitution, 1 half ln of x to the fourth plus 3x squared, all in an absolute value, plus c. And we've done it. So now, one final example for this, this topic. So what should be our choice of u? Sine's kind of on top. It's not really hidden in anything. So we're going to try one, e, 1 plus cosine as our substitution. And conveniently, 1 plus cosine has sine-ish as its derivative. So I feel like things are going to work out. Derivative du dx is equal to 
cosine has derivative of negative sine of x. So this means that dx is going to be du over negative sine of x. So our integral under the substitution becomes, uh, we're changing our variable of integration, so we will change our limits, just put them on hold, sine of x over u, and then our differential dx becomes du over negative sine of x. The sine expressions reduce away. We get that negative in the denominator, meaning it's just a negative expression overall. So we'll pull that out front to be negative 1 times our integral, 1 over u du. And that is something that we can absolutely do. So this equals negative ln of u, absolute value. But I once again almost see how easy it is to forget you're doing a definite integral. So we're going to evaluate this thing for some bounds. So we'll reverse our substitution and put in our correct bounds. So negative ln of 1 plus cosine of theta, whoops, cosine of x, because that's how the problem is written. Uh, all that jazz evaluated from x equals 0 to x equals pi over 2 becomes equals 2 negative, well, so for x equals pi over 2, negative ln of 1 plus cosine of pi over 2 minus negative ln of 1 plus cosine of 0. So what are these expressions? Well, the first one becomes negative ln of 1 plus 0, and negative times negative is positive ln of well, what is that? That's 1 plus cosine of 0 is 1, so 1 plus 1 gives us negative ln of 1 plus ln of 2. And since these are both positive numbers, ln of 1 is 0. And so we were left for our final answer of ln of 2. I dropped the absolute value there because 2 is a positive number, and so we're good to go. And that's it for examples of... Integrals involving exponentials and logarithms using substitution.